There are so many cameras out there on the market these days, sometimes it's really hard to decide on what you should be shooting your project on. But I do think there are ways to test cameras to truly see how they hold up and where they fall apart. So I decided to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Alexa Mini to the new Panasonic GH5S, which is a DSLR camera. And I decided to do three tests with it. The first one being a noise test. With a noise test, what you're looking for is how well does the image hold up generally in low light. When you're starting to push those high ISOs, such as 1600, to 3200 what you're looking for is the grain structure and also if there's blocking occurring in the footage because you're pushing that higher ISO so here I'm showing you a couple of images of what I would consider to be a noisy image where you see a lot of this grain a lot of the noise to a clean image where you're not seeing the noise you're not seeing the messy grain quality of the footage that you saw prior. When you're looking at these tests, you're not looking at color shifts. So you're not looking at how the colors are changing. You're only looking at how the grain is moving around on the image in these different ISOs. Starting with the noise test on the GH5S, I did start at a little bit of a higher ISO because all the ones prior to 1600 are really clean. You're not seeing a lot of difference between them. So for the GH5S, internally shooting V-Log 4K UHD at 10-bit 422 all intra. It holds pretty clean throughout the ISOs from 1600 to 3200. Next, I'm moving on to the Arri Alexa Mini, and this is shooting internal ProRes at the ProRes 4444XQ and going from 400 ISO, because these are definitely the cleaner ISOs on the Alexa, and then moving on up all the way through 3200, you will notice that as you start getting into the 1600 and beyond range, it does start uh, falling apart a little bit in the noise structure. And then finally, the last noise test that I did is with the Alexa Mini with the Airy Raw Open Gate 3.4K, applying a LUT later in post so that you get some of those colors back. Once again, the 400 to 800 range, you're getting very clean image with the Airy Raw. Um, but once you start getting into that 1600 and beyond range, you're definitely noticing a lot more grain and noise in the shadows and um, I'm noticing it a lot more and also in the greens. So what I found is that the GH5S at 3200 ISO, and I've zoomed in a little bit here, 200%, so you can really see the noise structure, is pretty much the same as the Alexa Mini at 400 ISO for both the ProRes recording and Airy Raw Open Gate recording. The next test I did is a Kodak test. If you're shooting moving water or rain, smoke, fire, all of those things that have a lot of movement from frame to frame, a good codec will hold all that information and it will feel natural. It'll feel like you're actually looking at it with your eye. However, if the codec is falling apart, you'll start getting blockiness. Uh, you'll seeing it kind of breaking apart. It's not handling all of that movement that the subject is giving you. So that's what you're looking for in a codec test.
spraying water on leaves in a tree, which really would break up a codec. If this were shot on a DVX or a DV, you would see blockiness all over the place. The codec would not hold up. But what I am noticing here is with the GH5S, it's, it's holding up great. I'm not seeing the codec falling apart. Same with the Alexa Mini with the internal ProRes and as well as the Airy Raw open gate. None of these codecs are falling apart. I would say that maybe the internal ProRes recording on the Alexa feels the best. It feels the most natural the way that the water is moving, but it's really a close call and truly all three of them are handling their internal codecs just fine. The last thing I'm testing is banding and just really seeing how well the footage holds up when you start pushing it around in color correction. So starting with the GH5S, just starting with a uh, flat, flat line curve, I just start pushing it around to see if it starts breaking apart, like where does, there's a little banding there happening as I really pull it down, um, giving me kind of an extreme S curve, just seeing if there's any places that it's truly falling apart. And when I go crazy extreme, then yes, it starts to break apart a little bit with the banding and a little aliasing happening as well. Increasing saturation levels, going full blast here. Then taking that curve and pushing it around yet again, seeing how it handles the gradation of the color from highlights to shadows. And GH5S is definitely still holding up um, with extreme pushing around. Might be a little bit of a color shift in the middle there. It's turning a little yellow, but not really anything to flinch at. Then moving on to the ProRes, starting once again with a flat curve and pushing it around, going to extreme levels to see where it falls apart. It doesn't show as much banding as, and there it is, of course, this super extreme curve. That's, you'd never really do that. Um, you're gonna start seeing it if you go crazy extreme. Then increasing saturation here. I definitely noticed that it uh, saturates the whole image a lot more when I go extreme with that. There's some aliasing happening here. Uh, the little blockiness, but I'm definitely with that saturation and then pushing around the curve. I'm asking a lot of the ProRes. And then the last, the Airy Raw open gate. Once again, we're starting with a flat curve and pushing it around quite a bit, which I'm expecting to not really see any, well, of course, yes, once again, crazy extreme curve, but with the Airy Raw open gate, I should have a lot more room to push it around, um, even with increasing saturation, then should also be able to kind of go extreme with these curves and it's, it's pretty much holding up. Um, but still, once again, with between the 422 10-bit of the GH5S uh, through the Airy Raw, I'd almost say I was able to push the GH5S around a little bit more than the ProRes, but not as much as the Airy Raw. So here it is, just a quick side-by-side -side comparison of GH5 then pushed, and then the Alexa Mini ProRes normal then pushed again and last the airy raw normal and then pushed so basically my conclusion with these two cameras if you're working in low light for sure gh5s wins hands down for Kodak, it's a toss up. It really is. It, it kind of just depends on what feels right to you. I did think that the Airy ProRes internal recording seemed to handle the leaves on the trees the best. And last, if you really know you're gonna be pushing around that color, then you might wanna consider shooting Airy Raw open gate.